Good morning guys, uh, welcome to the handle video for the 20 foot 6 dirt rotor. Uh, so I'll show you the videos inside first and then we'll go through outside. Uh, a lot of things are very common in a lot of different hands and uh, one of the first things to remember uh, is to try and to make sure that uh, all the lights are switched on, uh, all the main switch switched on which I'll show you in a second. Uh, let's start with the uh, bird beam first. So once you've got a main light switch by the door switched on, all the 12 volts on in the van, uh, all these lights here in the front uh, it's got a one touch beacon, like a blue light, second touch beacon, bright LED light. You can hold on to it, you can dim them as well as you can see. Just like that, nice and easy. Uh, and so it's a off position. There was the individual light switch. You've got a set here by the uh, by the bed and you've got set uh, by the lounge as well. Uh, then you've got the pressure hat system here. So the pressure hat basically is a positive pressure vent. Uh, it needs to be closed all the time. Uh, just before you go on your semi or for position or before you go into dusty roads, five, 10 minutes prior, uh, you open it, just push it open just like that, as you can see, uh, and finish your trip. Uh, it will allow the pressure coming through, then it will pressurize the van. Once you finish your trip back on the main road, make sure that it's uh, shut off because the water can come through the drain. Obviously there's no dust in this raining, so that's fine. While we're here, we also show you a, uh, a skylight, which is the domestic uh, mini hatch. You've got a, a here, which is a fly screen, bucket blind like that. So opening this underneath, you can see there's a little uh, handle and there's a little button there. So push the button, the handle comes down, and it can adjust in position number one, position number two, or right in like that. Okay, so shut it off, make sure they're shut off properly. A lot of people forget them on, so make sure that push in and the button you can see that means it's locked in. There is a second hatch uh, as well, which is a bigger hatch. As you can say, the only difference is it has got a light switch on top. So you can see it turns on bright or the blue light as well, as you see. So that's your light switch as well. Uh, well over here, we've got the uh, Sirocco fan here as well. So with Sirocco fan, basically, uh, remember one thing, don't push or pull something at uh, high pressure. Simple pr principle is just open the little uh, uh, lock there. Adjust the fan what a position you like. Put a lock back in. On the side, you'll see there's a button you see the fan in group symbol. Push it once, it's on a fan speed number one, speed two, speed three, and start the sample off. If you want to do a uh, timer, so say if you've got a number one setting on the top rail here, you've got a timer and you'll see the little blue light will pop in, which is that one there. So there's a three hour timer, six hour timer, nine hour and a 12 hours and cycles it off. That means the fan will continuously be on until you turn it off. If you want to turn it off, back in position, fan off, release that little lock, put the fan back in position and there's a traveling position for a fan. Uh, windows, so pretty simple, a nice and easy operation. Make sure you don't push or pull something. Uh, apply pressure if, if you have to apply pressure, something's not right, so very, very important to make that, keep that in mind. Locks open just like that. As you can see the blades open. When you open it, make sure you push it slowly and you'll hear the click. Once you hear the click, it stops like that. Second click open like this. Third click as the further as it goes. To close the blade, open a little bit release it all the way down and it comes down. If you're next door to neighbor or next to a tree or something you can't open all the way, let's say if you park in setting number one, you can open a little bit more like 50, 60 mil and it will release that lock and come down. If you want to have a little breeze to come through at night, there's only two grooves at the end here, one on this corner, other than other side is exactly the same. Uh, and that means that windows open a little bit, allows the air comes through. To lock it properly, make sure you lock the top one on this one and then size lock it properly all the way. Okay. To use the blind, use the top one, always use the top one, two hands, so you put pressure on either side, pull it down, the lock's in by itself, and you can use that to adjust it how far you want to go block out and pull it through. If you want to open the blinds back in normal position, so they open that just by clicking that little click, that goes down, then that goes down. Uh, that's a traveling position, uh, make sure you don't leave it blocked out for a longer period of corrugation. Uh, it will uh, make the springs weaker as well, so you want to stay up uh, as you want to all the time. Okay, uh, second thing also, you've got the bed, so lift up nice and easy. Underneath the bed, uh, you've got a slat system. The grey slats underneath here, this basically tells you where, if you want to put them together across like this, it will make the bed firmer. If you want to put them together, it will make the bed softer. As you can see, it's taking the pressure off. Uh, the bed so set here set there and the two on the other side so you can adjust it to your liking spend a few hours or night together and you understand what sort of works for you there's a bracket here if you want to put it on the uh, on a mat on a frame you can do so if you like to that's a tv it's a 20 foot smart tv just like any tv at your home uh, and i'll show you the tv setup there it is uh, it comes to the bracket built into the bracket 
and on TV, and there's a bracket with a single big filter on the side, which I'll show you in a second. Now, with the TV set up, as you can see, there's a bracket that goes in, take your tip off, the bracket slides in, uh, let them move here. All the cables, connections to do with the TV is all here. So you've got the antenna connection, the back of the TV, and you've got power connection, that's here. That's come from the top here, as you can see. That's the power here, as you can see, this, you can see on and off button. So pushed in is on, pushed out is off. Make sure you keep it off position, plug everything in and then put it back on, so that way there's chance itself uh, of popping the fuse is very, very slim, uh, and you can plug it back in and push it back on. You'll see the little switch here, which is automatic booster. So that red button, make sure the light's on full time all the time. That means you're boosting signal as it needs it all the time. It's got extra double T40 power point as well for your DVD player or some other things you want to connect. It's all here. Once you're done with that, you can wrap the back in position just like that. Sorry, nice and easy. Just make it power always given to you in any van that you, you have. That makes everything tidy up nice and easy. TV is not supposed to be traveled uh, with it on, so obviously you park it back under the bed in the box or you can put it uh, on the lounge. Okay, wind good antenna basically is as simple as just winding it up, it will wind up, and once you wind up all the way, you'll see it stops. And then you release that little lever down and you can adjust that at this position, it circles, it travels around, um, and you can leave it in a position until you get the right strength of signals in the TV. You can watch the TV as you do on it, uh, so release it in a position. Now, when you finish doing it, uh, that little V bracket has to match with the V bracket uh, on the roof, so that you can see like this, they match it together, nice and easy, and all you can do is just wind it down, so up and down, wind the signal, and that will go all the way, and wind down and hear the noise. So this is completes your, your area for this, except there's one little thing on this corner here, you can see there is a, uh, a battery in the system plugged in, uh, so it automatically works all the time. Uh, that's got MPPD solar control built into the system as well. The screen belongs to that is by the door, which we'll show you a bit later on. Uh, also, it's got in the bottom, you can see there's a gas hot water system and electric hot water system switches. Hot water system on the switches, uh, just keep in mind they're on demand only, which means you only switch it on when you need it. Once you finish, make sure you turn it off uh, so that saves uh, the energy to using that system. Uh, nice and easy. Here, you've got a switch here by the door. So you've got one switch belongs to the on switch, so we can switch on the on switch right here as well, you can see. Okay, and then you've got the second switch here belongs to the uh, bedroom right here as well. So Coming down here in your uh, kitchen area, so there's microwave, nice and simple. You always take the microwave out of it and you store it just, for example, right here. So that way you have that microwave secure. Otherwise, it's just spread microwave higher. 30 seconds confirm, different options of weight defrost, you've got options for clock, time defrost, kitchen, different time, different options uh, as well. Got, and there's option for pizza, potatoes, meat, and fish, and things like that. You can use that in the automatic settings as well. Those are manuals, pretty straightforward. Uh, tap, nice and easy, uh, just like tap home. Uh, you've got hot water, cold water, and you've got a, a filtered water as well. Underneath here, you will see the filter, which is here. It's normally better than soft filter, click and turn off, and you can take it normally lasts for about 12 months, there about, depends on the quality of the water, might be earlier, you will you'll notice they're reducing the reducing the pressure for the water coming out of this, uh, and that's when you know the filter's clock and you need to change it. Uh, it's nice and simple in that one there. Uh, cooker, so you've got a cooker here, so on this side, open the thing nice and easy, once the gas bulb is turned on, so there's a light here that belongs to the oven, as you can see, switch for this one. And you've got an ignition here, and what you can do, ignition, and you can sort of ignite all the gas. So you push in, turn, and you'll see the gas is on, nice like that. And they're all marked in different positions. This one belongs to this one, so you can have it. There you go, burners turn on, hold it for a few seconds, allow the smooth flow of gas, and let it go. Nice and simple. Same thing, this one belongs to 240. The very important thing for 240 is make sure the 240 is cooled down completely before you shut the lead. Uh, that's your safety mechanism as well, just to make sure that that's, uh, that's been followed. Uh, it's a very important safety system. Griller, same principle, igniting it, gas, and again, gas oven, as you can see, right there. Underneath here, you will see the little yellow valve, which is your isolation valve for gas for long term. If you don't have use for your gas, you can turn it off. Uh, and always always turn the gas balls off as well. 
fix that. Okay, nice little simple is draw. Uh, you also got the your area for storage. Uh, same thing here, you've got a storage in here as well, and the seats on both sides as well. Trifle table, it's nice and easy, just come out uh, just like that. Okay, and just use it as you go. Uh, once you finish using it, got traveling position, on pack down, there's a traveling position for that one. Uh, all weight covers and all that seems normal, uh, just nice and easy as you go. Then you've got the last which we showed you before, just like there. Uh, and a block of line on the side, and you've got a flash screen here as well. Okay, uh, pantry, so you've got a pantry, just like that, full height, so you've got four baskets. Make sure that uh, put the inside. Okay. Make sure you push it on so it just locks in so there's no extra stress on the door itself. Okay, now it comes to the fridge. So it's a three-way uh, automatic fridge. So to uh, turn the fridge on, basically hold the button and you'll see all the uh, light and flashing coming on. Uh, that's a touch screen, so this A means it's uh, automatic. You can manually override the 240, or the battery, which is the car battery when you're traveling, or the gas, it does automatically. The best thing is to keep the lever on A position, which means you automatically select the source what is available. So 240 is first priority, then the gas and the car connection uh, when you're traveling. Uh, you can, once it goes off, as you can see how it times out, then you can plug it on, it can go for the position. Uh, you can defrost, there's defrost mode as well, uh, and depends on what mode you're coming on, then you can adjust it automatically in A position, so it works by itself, and you can see that's nice and simple, all the different baskets and things like that, and it works automatically. You turn it off, you don't have a use for it, just hold it for a few seconds, you turn it off. Underneath the fridge, you'll see there's a uh, same yellow isolation valve for gas. Again, don't have use uh, for long term, you can turn it off. There's a water pump connection. The two tanks underneath, you've got two separate green valve. Uh, both on means it will use the water equally from both the tanks. You can turn off one uh, and you can use tank, uh, one tank water, not the other if you wish to. You can do that if you want to. Okay, coming down here in the ensuite. So, washing machine we're not plugging the power but it's very simple straightforward setup uh, opens like that okay check clothes in and on the soap and everything like that underneath here is a switch on button which power on power off uh, start and pause you can do pause as well if your cycles for 30 minutes it'll allow you to pause for two three minutes after they will not let you pause so the water filled in uh, in the in the tub uh, different program you can select as well in the light you'll see it pop up either can hot water normal water baby care function quick care quick uh, spin function, uh, turbo clean and things like that. Uh, you can try lock this by holding two buttons together, which is the rinse and the delay start. Hold it together, it says try lock on that Sorry. as well, so your children's not touching on that. Uh, and then start, nice and easy, will wash by itself. The minutes will here pop up automatically, uh, whatever it needs, uh, and you will know how many minutes the cycle is gonna go for. So that's your washing machine. Uh, here you've got the little LED light. Uh, here, it's just touch screen light, nice and simple, so leave it on for now. Uh, you go. Uh, you've got a double two foot cap ones and an extra switch. That's the second switch. Uh, it's like a two-way switch. One way switch is here, second is in the bedroom as well. Okay, now the important bit here is toilet. So toilet is basically simple. It's got a blue button here on top. The blue button just allows the water to flow through. Uh, when you release it, it will turn off by itself, so the water will stop. Uh, there's a cassette symbol here. It will light up uh, if the cassette is full, so you know it's time to empty it. Don't ignore it, otherwise water will flood everything out everywhere and require massive cleaning. Now, underneath here, you can see that there's a little a crack, a little lever here. That lever is open and closed the dial on the toilet. There's a barrier between the cassette and the toilet itself. So you'll see that's closed. Ideally, you need to keep it closed all the time. So the lever has to be centralized to the cassette, so to the toilet all the time. When you want to use a toilet, open it, use flush, and make sure to push it back in. Uh, very important to do that, otherwise things will jump out, especially the back of the van, it jumps a lot. So very important that, and we'll show you the cassette bit outside, how to put a water in, and chemical and things like that, when you go outside. So keep it closed, nice and easy. You got double towel rails, towel holder, nice and simple accessories. You've got the shower head here. Uh, you always remember a shower head not supposed to be just like that. What we'll do is, uh, before delivery, we'll be putting a little bag on it, tied up, so make sure it's not gonna fall. 
uh, hot water cold water collection standard exhaust fan in the shower any of the light switch here so one touch becomes like a blue light second touch becomes like a bright led light in here as well we'll leave it on when you turn the main light on come back yourself i'll show you how the the exhaust light works so exhaust one here works just like a single this opening this and this little fan here exactly the same principle for the one inside the shower once you finish doing it make sure it's very important because you did not dry but nice and tight uh, now while we're here, there's one more thing we'll show you in the front, which is like an LED screen. Now this is the screen that belongs to your battery system and that shows you all the uh, things. So basically you've got the light switch, so this light button here, so hold it, all the light will go off in the cabin. So that's your 12 volt isolation switch. And you can see the screen is blank. To so turn the light on, you can see the lights come on, it, it reads the time, it reads the amps and volts in the battery, it tells reads the time uh, remaining, it's click like that a second, we can turn it off. It also tell you how much solar going in at the moment. So 5.2 at the moment, uh, which is that going through. The tank, tank number one, tank number two, there's a gauge as well, telling you how much water in the tank. You see here, tiny little writing says pump one, pump two, generally it's only one pump. So one pump into the water pump button here, which is like a little droplet symbol. And you'll see the pump will turn off. That's so turn off the pump. Light here, which is basically just light for a screen. It just come to home, which is, this is a home screen as well. Uh, this one here is also for light switch for the sh uh, for the uh, lounge and the kitchen lights. Uh, there's a switch for that one. Uh, you've got the stove switch, which is the isolation switch for a stove on 240. You can leave it off uh, unless you want to use 240, then you can turn it off just in case you're not turning the knob over unknowingly and it's heating up without you knowing. Uh, the second, there's another little uh, uh, switch here, which is like a dial switch and that belongs to the outside awning lights. So number one is like bright light, number two is a, like a yellow buck function light, uh, number up and down, zero is light off, that belongs to the awning light outside. Double 240 power points, uh, and one thing covered that while we're here is the exhaust fan switch here, okay, so you can hear it, and there's a little LED light switch here as well. That's for exhaust, turn that off, nice and easy, and you've got another little LED touchscreen light here as well. Uh, so I think that's probably to cover everything that you need to know in caravan, everything else is experience based. Uh, and next video we'll go through outside uh, and cover all the outside part of this caravan as well.